So we're currently at 41 Industrial Park, which is where you'll find all the main industrial warehouses for Coca-Cola and Morrisons, etc. And it's just on the outskirts of Wakefield, and technically outward. So why are we here, I hear you ask? Well, we're not here to look at some grey retail sheds. No, we're actually here to look at something more historic from the 1700s that used to be right here on this whole site. Now this was known back in the day as the Outward Plains. It was a big open space and it was flat and it's also raised so you can see for miles around from this point. Not anymore because of these huge warehouses. And if you just look down here, it might give you a clue as to what used to be here. Does that give you any ideas? So this is known as Grandstand Road. And that's because it used to be Wakefield's answer to Aintree, right here. And there used to be a grandstand and a horse racing course, literally just beyond those trees there. But this, what I'm stood on right now, is one of the original roads. So just down there, you've got Outward and the, what is today, Outward Station, or what would have been Loft House Station, right at the end of here. And if we pan around this side, and towards Morrison's, the road continues that way. And if this race course only lasted probably a couple of years in the mid 1700s, but they don't actually know for sure the exact dates because it's not recorded. But what we do know is that it did exist. And there was a rather large or lavish grandstand built just over here. So again, this is Grandstand Road, which is named after the grandstand which would have been accessed off this road. So many, many years ago, you would have taken a left turn just up here and down to the actual grandstand, which is, would have been located somewhere over here. Today you can't, because like I said, there is now a Morrison's Depot just through them trees there. And this road just runs straight through, but the name is retained. So we made our way up the other side of Grandstand Way. And somewhere about here in these trees is where the road would have led down, so there would have been a track here off the road, heading down and towards what is today warehouses, like I said. But the grandstand would have been 200 yards or so just in front of us down there. We will head round there shortly and have a look where that, roughly where it was anyway. I mean, in, in these trees here, you can see a lot of uh, rubble and piles of stuff that's been moved around over the years. So there's definitely a lot of work taking place around here at some point, but this would have all been flat land and a race course in effect. Now it's said that this grandstand that was built over here was very lavish, especially for its time. It was made out of red brick and apparently the walls were 16 inches thick. So this building was built out of timber and bricks and stone as well and it would have held quite a lot of spectators on the race course at the time. It would have been paid for by all the people that would have attended these races, all the rich people anyway. Now there's only one picture that I can show you in this video, and it's technically not a picture, it's an actual painting or a drawing. And this is taken out of a book from the 1700s, which depicts the race course with the grandstand in the background. So this is what it would have looked like. Now again, this is a drawing or a painting and the artist is unknown. But you can see the two-storey building there in the background. And what we do believe is after it was a race course, it was sat derelict for a while and then it was taken over as a dwelling for some farmers because all this area become a strawberry farm and then later rhubarb farm. Hence, we're in the rhubarb triangle currently. And the actual building was taken over by multiple dwellings for farmers. Later on, it became dilapidated in the early 1900s and it got hit by a storm and took the roof off. So basically, it was unfit for purpose, so they demolished it. But it proved very difficult, again, to demolish because of how well built it was. So what they did was they had to use explosives and blow it to pieces and salvage all the stonework and any of the timber, which apparently was in immaculate condition in the roof. And all of that timber was reused on local projects so some houses in this area have probably got the original timber beams from Wakefield Racecourse or Outward Racecourse as it was known. So let's make our way around the other side and have a look at roughly the location of where the grandstand would have been. 
Now, whilst we're here, it's worth mentioning that there's a story of a ghost in the area as well that apparently used to haunt the grandstand in the 1700s and was reportedly seen even when it became a farm and recently as well, so they say. So we're just heading up Telford Way, which again is adjacent to the Morrison's Warehouse, which is on my right now. And up here on the left is roughly where that grandstand would have been located all the way up until the early 1900s. So let's see, I very much doubt it, but let's see if there's anything remaining up here. So this is the approximate location of where the grandstand building was, just roughly where that fence is on the other side there, in that compound. And the main road coming down from Grandstand Way would have been somewhere here on the right, which again is a warehouse today, and he would have headed down to the grandstand just over here. Now, if I just try zoom in for you, there is a building in there currently, and it is red brick, but I very, very, very much doubt it's anything to do with the grandstand, because like I said, that was demolished a long time ago now. You're talking over a hundred years ago, it was demolished. But yeah, it looks like a compound for the warehouse opposite today. But that's exactly where it was, right there. What I'll quickly do then to end the video is just send the drone up, just to give you an aerial shot and you can see how big this site is with the warehouses today. And you'll get an overview of where the race course would have sat in the 1700s. Thank you very much for joining us on that video. I know it was a short one, but we'll be back soon with a big series. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.